Okay guys, so we're back with another video, and today I want to go over some branch prediction stuff because I was talking to some people about building a pipeline CPU, and to do that, we're going to have to have a branch predictor. So let's look at a reason why we actually need a branch predictor. So this here is showing that the instructions will go first to last going like this, so first is at the bottom and last is at the top, and here is saying time from it goes from left to right. So if we look here, this is the first instruction that happens. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth. And then these colors are each instruction uh, or ex uh, stages in a pipeline. So we have five stages. We have instruction fetch. It grabs the instruction from wherever it's being held. It decodes that instruction and starts uh, sending out its conditions uh, and its, its uh, command signals and all that stuff for the pipeline. Then we have an execute phase where it does most of the arithmetic, a write back where it saves to registers, and a memory phase where it actually outputs to RAM if it does if it has to do a RAM operation. Okay, so I want to first go over what like a pretend code. So imagine like there's code that came before this. Whoops. Imagine like this continued like this, some time before zero, some code that I already ran. It's just blah, blah, blah. And now we're looking at it here, at this point in space. So there could be something in these registers already. There probably is, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. And then the code would, we're just looking at the snippet in time. So the first thing we have is A gets A plus B, then B gets B plus three. And then we're asking, is A greater than B? And then if it is, jump. Um, else do this, and else do this is the, the next line. And so each one of these instructions has five stages to it. It's got to gra be grabbed, it's got to be decoded, it's got to be executed. The, the results have to be written back to the registers, and if it has to access RAM, it's going to do it in the last final st stage. So let's look at where is A greater than B when it's in the execute phase. So this is when the ALU in the CPU is doing a subtract and looking at its flags and it will usually set, set its flags register for then being able to do something else. Um, so for it to be able to jump in the next stage right here in the execute phase of the jump it needs to first be able to do this here. But it can't jump because it doesn't know if A is greater than B because this command below it was using B it's setting the value to B and B is only in its instruction er, in its write back stage. It hasn't been it hasn't been finished writing back. If it was, it would be in its memory stage. So while it's in its write back, we can't rely on that data to be there. We can rely on it once it's in the memory stage. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to predict: Are we going to take the branch? Or are we not going to take the branch? And so that's the whole purpose of this video. Okay, so I guess I should start off saying. A, 2-bit branch predictor is not very hard to build. It's a 2-bit counter with edge protection. And I'll go over what that means. Um, but first I want to show you like this is one of my f this is my second attempt uh, here. Here is my my first attempt up here somewhere. Here's my first attempt. So this works kind of large. This is my second attempt works same design a little bit smaller and here's my third attempt a lot smaller so these things are really simple so if you want to build one of these all you have to do is go back to my previous video where it shows you how, where I show you how to build a PC I, th I think I call the video an upgraded PC um, it's basically an up down program counter with branching but for this you can take off the branching input stuff so you don't need the comparator that goes in and the control logic to allow the comparator to feed in because we don't need to branch and um, you can just hook up some control logic and I'll show you how the control logic works so here's the outputs of the counter here's the, the most significant bit and here's the least significant bit it's only two bits so we can have four states zero 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 one one zero one one and then zero zero again right um, we all, the output of the most significant bit is what tells us whether it or not it thinks we should take the branch or not and the way this works is it looks at your past input history was the was the branch taken yes or no based off what it predicts so if it predicts something and you take the branch if it predicts take the branch 
and you take the branch, but then it turns out, no, that value is wrong and you end up having to clear the pipeline, you come back over here and you say, was the branch taken? No, it, uh, and it, it said yes, and instead it was supposed to be no. You leave this at zero. But if it was taken, then you turn it to one. So that's the feedback system that says, if I was wrong, let me know I was wrong. So, and then here's the update button, basically the clock. So you can have this configured multiple ways, or you can have it update whenever the CPU, or like on the rest of the CPU clock, or you can have it on some delay. You, c you can control it to also be clock when it, uh, when this comes, when the feedback system comes back from was the branch taken. So first let, let me ex show you how it's just a counter with edge protection, right? This right here is basically, right now it's saying count down, right now it's saying count up. That's the way that works. And right now we're at zero, zero. So if we're at zero, zero, and right now telling it to count down, and it has edge protection, it won't count down any further past zero, zero. That means it won't roll over to one, one, no matter how many times I click the update button. But now if I said, okay, go ahead and start counting up, pretend it's just a counter now. Now we're at one. Now we're at two. Now we're at three. But if we're still counting up and it needs edge protection, we don't want it to roll over to zero, zero. When I clock it, it doesn't roll over to zero, zero. So basically it's just a counter that doesn't roll over in any state. So it won't roll over from three to zero and it won't roll over from zero to three. Okay, so now let's look at it as if it's a, a two-bit branch protector instead of just a counter. So let me decrement this thing back down to zero. Okay, so we're at zero. So in the zero state, this is called the strong not taken. This means our past action was not taken. It's predicting right now not taken. So let's say it predicts not taken. This is zero. It goes to CPU. Here's the CPU. The CPU does something. I'm just going to build a box. CPU does something. And then the CPU outputs over here to this. And it says, this told it don't branch. So it didn't branch. And it turned out it didn't have to branch. So it stays at zero here. Was the branch taken? No, it wasn't. Because I told you not to take And I told you not to take it. My branch prediction was correct. Let me update this. Boom, we update it. It still stays at zero, zero, which means we don't, we don't want you to branch again because your last prediction was zero. Um, but let's this, let's this time think that it turned out wrong. Okay, we branched, or we didn't take the branch, but uh, it turns out that our value was, was wrong and we should have. So now we come over here and we say, yeah, we sh we should have. Uh, it, it 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 was not it was taken the branch was taken we should have taken it basically um and then we update it and now it says oh crap our last action was we took it but uh we we we're still not sure if that's a fluke so we're going to say no don't don't take the branch again so we say okay we're, we're not going to uh we, we it's saying don't take the branch again let's say it, we don't take the branch. So was the branch taken? No, it wasn't. We update it. It goes from being a weak negative to a strong negative again, saying, hey, definitely do not branch. You're definitely not ready to branch again. So now let's update it to state one again. And let's say in state one, which is the weak uh, don't branch, let's say that it was wrong again. It told us don't branch and we say we should have branched. So the branch was taken and it told us not to so it's wrong so it needs to learn from that. Well, we update it. It says wow okay my, my last my last action was don't branch but now I'm saying hey I think you should branch and we say okay actually we did take that branch again it goes from being a weak branch to being a strong branch, saying our past action was branch, and now I'm predicting you should branch again. And if you did branch again, it should just keep that same output, saying, hey, your last one was that, and I want you to do it again. 
saying, hey, your last one was branch, and I want you to do it again. But now you're saying, oh, you're predicting that I should branch, and I ac actually shouldn't. But because I had so many yes branches in a row, it's still going to say yes for a little bit, just in case this is just a one-off fluke. But then if you get it again, saying, no, I was wrong, it goes back down saying, no, OK, we won't branch anymore. So this is the output here saying, do we want it or not? And I hope this explains how that works. Uh, I'm not going to really go over how to build this because it's super simple. Well, I'll, I'll go over how to build it, but I'm not going to build a tutorial for you. So if you go and look at my last uh, counter video, you can take, copy that counter, build two bits of it, so it's really easy to build without world edit. And then on the clock input here, you see how this comes to the clock down here? So on the clock input here, we have this AND gate, which basically says, if, if this is on here, it won't allow signal through. So right now it's allowing signal through. And basically we say, when the bottom bit is one and the top bit is one, that's what these two torches mean, we AND them together here and say, so when both are become true, this will turn on. But we also need that only to happen when we're incrementing. Or sorry, when, yeah, when we're incrementing. So when we're incrementing and we're at three, we don't want the clock to happen anymore. Oops. So you have to think. There's, it's an AND gate with three inputs. I'm stuck. OK. It's an AND gate with three inputs. We need to know that we're, if we're incrementing, and we're at 3, so incrementing, and we're at 3, then I don't want to allow the clock input. Then the same thing in reverse. If I'm decrementing here, and I'm at 0, the, the two uh, repeaters here mean 0, it's a decoder, right? 1, 1 for 3, 0, 0, and uh, 0, 0 for 0. So if this is 0, and this is a no, then this whole line becomes off. Imagine like this had no input to it right there. This whole line becomes off and it says, hey, I'm at zero and we're trying to decrement, but don't let it roll over. Because otherwise this thing would act like a counter and then update to the next state, which would be if we're at zero and we're decrementing would be at one one. And if we're at one one and we're incrementing would be zero zero. So the control logic for this is really easy. You just need an AND gate on the input that says that's controlled by uh, a decoder on the output. And only one bit of the output is actually your branch predictor. So I hope this uh, gives you guys some insight on how to actually build one of these. Um, let me know what you end up using it for. Hopefully you, you end up using it for some sort of pipeline CPU. But um, yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully you like it and subscribe.